Good morning, Robert Scribbler. It is October 1st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, what I'm going to do is talk about the impacts of tropical storm Rosa as it moves over the Baja Peninsula and into the southwestern US with the potential to produce very heavy rainfall over the next few days. But before I get into that, I'd just like to call your attention to a very stormy ocean environment over much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures overall across the Northern Hemisphere and in general, a global ocean system that is much warmer than normal overall. First off, this is Leslie here in the central North Atlantic. And we have a number of tropical cyclones that I'm going to point out to you. We have Sergio here in the eastern Pacific. And this is a satellite shot from yesterday, September 30th. We don't have the global update for the satellite shot for October 1st yet. This is Rosa on approach to the Baja and the U.S. Southwest as of yesterday. This is Wolaku, which is now a major hurricane in the central Pacific. It's expected to track to the west of the Hawaiian island chain before getting picked up into a, a trough and pulled off toward the Pacific Northwest, coastal British Columbia and coastal Alaska. Here we have Trami following a, a rather strong strike to Japan. And last of all, Kong Ray, which is to the east of the Philippines and is expected to track off to the north and possibly threaten Japan or Korea by October 5th. So a very, very stormy ocean environment in the, in the tropical North Atlantic and in the middle latitudes of the North Atlantic. So for this segment, we're going to be focusing in on Trami, and this is a satellite shot of the cloud coverage related to Trami. As of now, it's, it's dark in the, on the Pacific side, on the western side of the U.S. at this time. So this is a, a nighttime satellite shot, and you can see the, the lights in the Seattle region, for example, as well as the, the heavy cloud cover moving in over the southwestern U.S. in association with Rosa. Looking at the National Weather Service radar, we can already see some very heavy bands of precip pre precipitation moving in through, uh, through the portions of California, uh, New Mexico, and Arizona here with he heavy bands getting into the Arizona region at this time. And over the course of the day, we expect heavy rain to continue to fall over this region. Looking at forecast rainfall amounts, it looks like over the next one to two days, two to four inches of rain could fall over sections of Arizona which would be very heavy rainfall for this region. It's very seldom that you see such heavy precipitation amounts and grounds are, are very dry. We, there, there has been a, a 16, 17 year drought in this region, in particular in the Colorado River Basin. And this is creating kind of like a, almost like a tabletop condition where any rain that does fall is, is likely not going to get readily absor absorbed by soil and will tend to produce more flash flooding than you would tend to see in a moister or more open soil environment. And in addition to that, we've had a lot of wildfires which may increase the risk of landslides from, from heavy rainfall in this region. Over the next week, as much as seven inches or more of rainfall could fall over parts of the Southwest. And th this is again, very severe rainfall for 
this time of year or in general for this region of the world, even though you tend to get some monsoonal moisture at this time. And the total rainfall amounts that are predicted could amount to as much, much, much as six to six months to a year's worth of rainfall in just a few days' time. So a very severe rainfall event focusing in on the U.S. Southwest with the far northward movement of an eastern Pacific tropical cyclone with tropical storm effects possibly impacting parts of the Southwest. Now, last week we talked about uh, Ser Sergio a bit and earlier models had indicated that Sergio would sweep in to the southwestern U.S. N new models are not showing that, S shows Sergio moving further out into the Pacific Ocean here and not recurving fully into the southwest, which means that there is a lower likelihood of a double strike, although troughs do appear to be continuing to move in through this region. So an overall rather stormy environment for the southwestern U.S. predicted over the coming 10 days. It's worth noting that we should probably keep an eye on Sergio because forecasts could change, forecast tracks could change, but at present, Sergio is not expected to heavily impact the U.S. Southwest, which is a good thing. You don't want to see a, a double impact for tropical cyclones. Now, before I get into an analysis of, of global sea surface temperatures and sea surface temperatures near the U.S. Southwest, I'd just like to note that Tropical storm Rosa at this time does not present a major threat due to its winds and storm surge flooding. The main impact is likely to be due to rainfall. Presently, maximum sustained winds in Rosa, according to the National Hurricane Center, are 50 miles per hour. And the storm at this time is rather disorganized. So it's, it's not likely to produce major hurricane type wind effects the the primary issue and, and and we've seen this with a number of storms recently is going to be rainfall that is excessive for the region where where the rains are falling in this particular event now looking at sea surface temperatures we have much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the region of the Eastern Pacific in which Rosa moved. And ironically, it doesn't appear that upwelling occurred to the extent that it cooled off sea surface temperatures in a, in a significant fashion following the motion of Rosa to the north and then toward the east. So this region of the world is, is still much warmer than normal. And these much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures help to fuel Rosa and allow it to move so far to the north to impact the southwest. It's very rare that we see a tropical cyclone impacting the southwest as we do right now. And we have a little bit of time. I, I want to talk a, a little bit about global sea surface temperatures. But before I do, I just like to talk about atmospheric water vapor. There's, there's quite a bit of atmospheric water vapor that is fueling up from funneling up from the tropics and off of those much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures. And over the next 24 hours, these high atmospheric water vapors are expected to concentrate in the southwest, particularly over the Colorado River, which is a bit of a, a silver lining here because the Colorado River has been in a, in a multi -dec a two decade drought at this time. So it might help to provide some relief for the Colorado River. Now we've got a little bit of time, so I'd just like to show you how widespread above normal sea surface temperatures are in the Pacific from north to south and from east to west. Most of the Pacific Ocean is showing above normal sea surface temperatures. This is a sea surface temperature anomaly map. The Indian Ocean also shows widespread above normal sea surface temperatures as well as the Atlantic, both north and south. But the Pacific is extraordinarily warm at this time. So providing fuel for the storms that we are seeing, which is also a signal of human-caused climate change where you see these above normal sea surface temperatures. 
Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.